Before we get started with this video, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about safety and longevity. After I got this printer out of the box, uh, I recorded the video. And then we started a conversation on Twitter and on Facebook. And a lot of people are very curious because low cost machines mean it's going to get into the hands of more people. And by more people, they're not gonna have as much experience with resin based 3D printing. And so they may not follow proper safety protocols. Also, a lot of people are releasing videos, including myself, about these low cost resin based machines. And we've had them for not that long really not that long. What's gonna happen six months or a year down the road? Are they still gonna perform? Are the companies gonna honor warranties? Are there gonna be replacement parts available? So I don't know the answer to that. And I just wanna say that right up front. What I'm gonna give you is my opinion on this machine and my usage of it, but there are still other factors at play. Plus, I wanna make sure you understand <laughs> resin-based 3D printing is messy and it's gross and it's, dangerous because you don't want to get that resin on your skin. You'll see Sean and I use gloves. You should use gloves as well. Nitrile gloves, they're wonderful. Plus, I mentioned ventilation in the area. Take that to heart. It is very important that you're not huffing resin fumes all the time. So, low cost 3D printing when it comes to resin. It is fantastic. Be safe and just watch out for the future as you don't know the longevity of these machines. And with that, here's your video. Normally on the channel, we show off all sorts of machines, big machines, small machines, expensive machines, cheap machines, machines made of butter, resin, ranch dressing, you name it. But this is special because a company by the name of Longer 3D sent this over. It's called the Orange 10. It's a resin based 3D printer and it's $229 US. That's crazy. It's crazy and it's impressive. Impressive enough that I want to talk about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Hello there. Welcome back. I've got Sean next to me. And Sean's here because Sean has no experience doing resin-based 3D printing. Zero. Not None. Even, not even with these. Not even with these. So my goal here is to not only show you this machine, but give Sean some ideas about this machine. And then with this full bottle of resin, he's gonna go off and experience the world of resin-based 3D printing for the very first time. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about no sanding. Not that I sand now, but, but not having to sand also is good. If you talk to Bill Duran, he will still sand his Form 2 prints. His end results are perfect. Sure. And, and there's a reason. Yeah, I mean, you could start off not sanding, but then eventually you'll probably sand. I'm sure I will. So this all started off when I got this out of the box. I didn't film anything. I just wanted to get out of the box and kind of give it a try. My only experience with resin-based 3D printing is with the Form 2. I know that uh, Form 2, the Piopoli Moai, even Uncle Jesse just talked about the Elegu Mars on his channel, which was an inexpensive one. And so I thought, hey, this is a very inexpensive resin-based 3D printer. Let's give it a go. And it produced this model right here. This is called the Zombie Hunter. And it's perfect. It's glory. Like, I, I saw this and I was taken aback by how perfect this inexpensive 3D printer was able to print this. I mean, you saw it. Yeah, it's crazy. It, like, and you pointed out to me, like the the detail in the back of the head, like it's all just misshapen, like a normal head like would be. Like a normal head would be, yeah. Right. If you were to shave your head, all of those little bumps and scratches in your, in your skin that you would have yeah. that you don't know about, they are in this model. So it did a fantastic job recreating this. And this was just one of the models on the SD card. So that was the first one. It was good. So I thought, let's try another one. This one, unlike this one, isn't hollow. So it's it's full of resin. And uh, usually with SLA prints, mm -hmm. resin-based prints, that has a little hole to drain. Oh, gotcha. Because if it's an opaque resin, it's really hard to get the UV light all the way through to cure it. Mm. So while this doesn't slosh around, there is a chance that the resin inside of this model isn't fully is cured. It, is it? Okay, gotcha. But if you look at it, it looks great. It came with a weird sort of raft. And again, it was just the one on the SD card and I cured the resin in the Pacific Northwest sunlight or cloud light or whatever yeah, it is. But pretty, it's pretty cloudy. Uh, it looks gorgeous. It looks great, the, right? The, the raft was a bit difficult for you to get off, it looks like. There's a bunch of pieces 
broken off and yeah. all that. So that's interesting, but it's it's way it feels solid. It, like, it, <laughs> yeah, it like, feels solid and it is solid. Right. And with the raft, what you can do, just like what Bill does, uh, you can carve, you can sand, you can cut. Right. And, you know, it's it's resin, so it's good to go. Perfect. Yeah, this this model is, is beautiful. Like I, I'd love to see that fully painted. Maybe we'll try. <laughs> Maybe we'll give it to my daughter Riley. She's there good at art. Right. Then I thought, let's try some models of my own. So Longer 3D gives a slicer for this machine. It's actually got some decent features to it, like auto support generation and the ability to have more than one model on the plate, the ability to clone models on the plate, rotating and scaling, all that sort of stuff. It worked well. And what I did was these two. So first, this is, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a geometric shape. I scaled this way down and you can tell kind of towards the bottom. I don't know if I'll be able to clip these off. Let's see. Gotcha. Are those supports? These are supports. So these are the automatic supports that oh. it generated. And if I am careful, I bet I could get some of these off because it's just a tiny little point that they touch. But uh, someone with better eyesight than me could probably do that, which I could. And it turned out, I think, pretty good. Getting it off the build plate wasn't too hard because of the hoops, it's just because a small, of the supports. It's a small contact. So I just kind of went with the yeah, scraper and it done. was good to go. This is the rook that everybody prints on resin-based machines because there's a staircase on the inside and a little almost DNA helix. Yeah, does it spiral up? Yeah. yeah. So most of the time, most printers are able to get this no problem. This one had an issue with the helix on the inside and I don't know if it was my slice settings, but uh, the helix doesn't go all the way to the top. The staircase looks hmm. great. There's a little bubble on the top layer right there. Yep, I see And that. I don't know if that was a part of the resin, but the, the rest of the model looks really, really good. So the machine mm. itself is a, a UV LCD. No matter how many models are on the plate, it all takes the same amount of time. Unlike the Form 2, it's not a laser curing resin, and it's not using a gal galvanometer, I think, going back and forth and curing the resin in, in certain lines. And this one uses an LCD, almost like almost like your, your phone screen. And at the bottom, it produces UV light in the shape that the layers need to take. And so if you have more layers, that's what takes the time. Because it does a whole layer at a time, no matter how many models are on there, it's gonna take the same amount of time. Interesting, so you, you can know just based on layers how long your print's gonna take. There isn't a variation in detail or in, everything's just the same. That's right. That's cool. What's really interesting about this machine is, is that it is low cost. It actually has the, <laughs> the printing size here. It's 98 millimeters by 55 millimeters by 140 millimeters tall. So the LCD that's in use is actually smaller than the iPhone XS screen that, oh, wow. that I have. It's, it's kind of tiny. Uh, and if you look at other machines, like the Form 2 is bigger, the Elegoo Mars is slightly larger, but again, it's $229 US, right? That's, right? that's awesome. It does come in a box and the, the bottom is fully assembled. And then this orange cover is acrylic and it's it just comes in pieces and it gives you these clear rubber bands to put around. It does smell a little like resin. It does? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that when I went into the garage the other day. I just it was just I caught a whiff of it. The whole the whole garage smelled like resin. It, that's kind of one of the drawbacks of any resin-based 3D printing. If you have resin and it's in an open air environment, uh, it's going to smell like resin. And so if you have this in a small room, uh, it's going to stink, and there's a good chance you're going to need some ventilation. So also, also with resin-based 3D printing, you're going to need gloves. These are nitrile gloves, and these are just, I mean, I got these at a big box store, 10 bucks for a box of 100. Let's actually move this all over to the side because what I want to do is show you how we get the models off of the build plate. This is just a painter's rag, and I do this because it's messy. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you how to do this and they have videos on their website that tell you how to do this. But what I've learned from having the Form 2 is that you have some isopropyl alcohol in a container that you can dip the model in first and kind of shake it around a bit and that gets the uncured resin off of the model and into the solution. Once you have that shaken around and you have most of it off, then you go to the clean isopropyl alcohol and just let it sit for a bit. After a little bit of time, then you rinse it off with some water, or at least that's what I've been doing. I'm sure there are different ways to do this. So what I have on here are two open source rings. What uh, Longer 3D does is they give you these cards and that's a pretty design. It is. I thought that had to do with calibration, but it doesn't. It's actually- Just a playing card. It's a jack of diamonds. What they do is they tell you to take the card and to gently scrape away 
the uncured resin that's on top of the build platform. Question about resin printing. Yeah. Uh, is it okay to have this top off for very long? Does it matter? Like, is this resin gonna do anything is it, if it just sits out in open air like that? The resin cures by UV. And okay. so, so if, it if it's be. near any sort of light source that emits any sort of UV, Gotcha. It will cure. Generally, you don't want to do this in the sun. Uh, and then this will not really protect from UV at all, correct? No, that's what that's for. Is it, so does, usually does this, that okay. shade of orange protects from the 405 nanometer wavelength UV that I is gotcha. used to cure this resin. Okay. Simple enough. Simple enough. And then kind of hold it over here. There's, there's quite a lot of uncured resin that's just kind of dripping there. And it depends on the model that you're printing because everything is printing upside down. So I'm just kind of holding that right there. Oh, thanks, Sean. No problem. Things like the Perusa uh, SL1 and the Formlabs machines, they have their own built-in curing stations. So you can take the plate that's right here and just move it into the washing station and the curing station and you don't have to do this process at all. Which is kind of nice. But, but they, again, it's they it's, cost way they, more. They cost way more. So you're paying for convenience. Can right. you go ahead and open that up? I me? will. <laughs> See ya. So there we go. There's the ring. And there we go. Perfect. That one landed. And then you we're done. Swish it around. Do you want to just put this top on there and just kind of uh, shake it, or do you want to? I do that. Oh, okay. So I just kind of. Are they fragile at all at this in this state? They are a little fragile at this state because okay. the resin isn't fully cured. So right. what you want to do is be kind of careful. And some people snip the supports off before it cures, some people after. I, I cure everything in place and, okay. then, and then I snip off because it's... Is there an ad advantage to doing it. it before? I don't know the answer to that. Maybe oh. someone does. There we go. So see, open source ring. Oh yeah. See all that detail on the side? Yeah. Yeah, it looks that lo pretty good. That looks like, uh, that, well, it is Prusha's <laughs> yeah, that's tattoo. tattoo. Yeah, that's You can tell it was, when it was dripping over here, there was a lot of uncured resin. There's a resin. lot of it in there, So yeah. now it looks good. Like, nice and clean. Yeah, right? now it looks clean. So go ahead and open up that one. And then we'll just drop it in. Perfect. You can put that up. So you can tell this one has the color of resin. Yeah, it does. Because it has a bunch of resin suspended in the solution. Milky orange. That one is clear. Yep. So at this point now, we can let that sit for a bit. Go ahead and grab the orange top and put it back on. Mm, yes. I'm going to take this back off. I'm sorry to <laughs> insult your handiwork. All well, for nothing. Hold on to that, please. I so will. while that's soaking, what I can kind of show you is right here. So what this uses is a tank and it has what's called, I think, FEP film at the bottom. And the film, the tank has these two metal pieces that squish together. And mm -hmm. so if you ever damage the FEP film or you need to uh, remove it for any reason, you just, you undo a bunch of screws and it comes out. So these two hold the tank. Oh, wow. So there's the tank. Yeah. Right there. Got it. And uh, what you can do if you want to change color of resins, you take the tank off and then using the filters that they give you right here, they filter out any hardened pieces that might be in the resin and you can actually put it back in the bottom. Oh, convenient. Yeah. Should we do that while that's going? Sure, let's just do that. So the filter that they give you has a bigger space than the bottle. So you have to oh. pour it kind of slowly. Oh no. Ready? Oh, I'm ready. As, as I'll ever be. I don't want it to overflow. I know. Yeah, if you pour it all back, there could be solid pieces of resin that have broken off or supports or failed prints that are in the bath that uh, that would make it into the bottle and that would be kind of bad. These are just a thin screen. If you find your own thin screens that are bottle sized, you could probably get away with pouring faster. Nope, too much, too much. Oh no! <laughs> I thought we had more room in there. Go ahead and cap that up. It's messy. How much resin should I put in there? Uh, fill it halfway. So as you put resin in this machine, you have to remember that this platform goes into the resin. Mm -hmm. So if it's too full and it goes down into the resin, it will spit out. It's just like uh, having a full cup of uh, Coke Zero and then adding ice. <laughs> Thanks. And then adding too much ice. I do that very often. I like ice and I like Coke Zero. Crushed ice. Crushed ice. Specifically. Yeah. So how much, do you know like about how much a bottle of resin costs? I don't know the answer to that question right now. Uh, when this was sent to me, this was uh, this unit came with two bottles of resin. Okay. It's going to take whatever resin you want to get it. So you don't have to use the longer 3D resin. There's right. all sorts of different resins out there. I know... Um, different colors and stuff too, Different right? colors, right. different mixtures. I think there's the Piopoli resin. There's some other third-party resin. Uh, I know Bill Duran's using this crazy gray strong resin with his form machine. Yeah. So you, you have options. And what's great in their slicer is it gives you the option to change the settings for how long the UV light is exposed to the layer, 
how often the layer lifts, and uh, it's, it's pretty configurable. I'm not as talented in the, uh, in the resin world, so I don't know what exactly needs to be changed as far as those settings, but if you do your research, you'll find out. One thing I want to say about this machine... It's, it's freaking loud. It's kind of loud. <laughs> this was in the garage, and that's why the garage smelled like resin, but when you open the door to the garage, uh, out in the garage is the, the home server, is the Creality CR10 S Pro, right. is the Raze 3D machine, is the Fun Mat machine. All of these things have active cooling fans. This was the fan that we heard from a distance. Yeah. So just know if this is a device for you, you may have to find a room it can go into that you can shut the door. Because this is this is the idle yeah, it's, sound. It's, it's got to keep that. Uh, it's got to keep that LCD cool. I'm gonna turn it off. Th thank you. Much better. There we go. There we go. One for each. So how much uh, is this? Is that a typical length of time that we would keep that, them in there? Yeah. It okay. just depends on the resin, how big it is, uh, how big the model is, how uh, detailed it is, how much, I don't know. I mean, it's up to personal preference. There are sure. ways you can do it. So uh, not too shabby, right? Not bad at it, all. It recreated the detail pretty great. There's a lot of detail in the sides that it recreated. And then the supports themselves, I would uh, take those off once we cure them. So we'll take these out into the Pacific. Hey, it's sunny outside. It is. It's supposed to get we'll, like 80 degrees. We'll today. take these out into the sun, and then uh, we'll post some pictures right here uh, after they cure. <laughs> Wait, uh, pictures. There we go. There we go. Are you going to put no in your <laughs> hand now? <laughs> no, I will not. Open source. This is it says open source around that. Like, it you, sure does. And, and you can read it, which is fantastic. Yeah. Because there's no way that would maybe, maybe on a rail core you could get that, but... Maybe. No, I think I think this is beyond the limits of what FDM can produce. Yeah, I think so. And if you want to produce things like this, like the like the zombie hunter, like rings, like jewelry, like anything like that, to get started into resin-based 3D printing, $229 for the machine insane. is insane. And I had my uh, my reservations at first because it just came in an anonymous cardboard box. <laughs> it was packaged well, and it took me a while to put together the acrylic because I'm just not the smartest human on earth. But it works well. <laughs> it works really, really well. And I am excited for what Sean will be creating with this. And he'll give you some updates on, uh, on the channel or on his Patreon or something like that. Mini figs. But, uh, again... The whole reason that we, we did this video is because I was surprised at the quality I got from the Zombie Hunter, did some more prints, and at $229, this is just, it's, it's a great deal if you want to get into resin-based 3D printing. The Form 2 and 3 are great. Uh, the Moai from Piopoli and right. the Big Moai are great. Again, Uncle Jesse did the Elegu Mars, which is great. This is cheaper than all of them, and again... If, if this is your budget, if you're a budget conscious person looking to get into resin based 3D printing, the, the Orange 10 from Longer 3D, it performed well for me. I would imagine it would perform well for you as well. The build volume is not the best, right? But I mean, most of them aren't going to be very big either. Most well, the, resin printing. The, the build volume on this is pretty small, all things, right. if you're comparing it to an FDM machine. Right. Um, the build volume on many of these lower cost resin based machines is smaller, but they're not meant for large prints. They're sure. meant for jewelry, they're, they're meant, they're for, meant for miniatures, they're yep. meant for smaller heads. And uh, if this is your goal, then. Uh, it's great. It's great. I mean, it's, it, it, I mean it's, look at that. It's great. It's like the uh, the Ender three or the CR ten of the resin world, right? Like it it's, it it breaks down the price barrier of entry. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I always thought resin based was one of those things where it was too expensive and too messy and whatnot. Right. And one of those things had to give. It either had to be way less messy or it had to be way less expensive. And the Form 3 um, and uh, the SL1 with the cleaning and washing station, mm -hmm. that broke down the messy, so you're paying for convenience. At this point, this is a little messy, but it's so cheap at 229 <laughs> Right? Like, yeah, it's 100%. crazy. Yep. Well, Sean will get used to the slicer. He'll give you some updates as well. I can't hey, wait for that. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Uh, if this is what you're looking for, I hope this works out for you. There's a link in the description where you can get it. Uh, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all. As always, high five.